Okay, now let's talk about a very important concept in cloud storage called as storage class. So you've created a bucket and within this particular bucket, you've uploaded an object. Now this particular object can be of these four classes. It can be either a standard class, a near line storage, a code line storage, or an archive storage. So this is based on how your particular data is going to behave or how your particular object is going to behave. Let's assume that this is an object that is going to be frequently used either for uploading, for reading, for changing the metadata, etc. Then you would move it to the standard access. Now standard access has the maximum storage cost, but it has no retrieval fee. So if you want to read that particular data, move it, change the metadata, etc. There is no cost involved in it. So make sure that if you are creating an object or if you're uploading an object that will be very frequently used, make sure that the storage class that it belongs to is the standard access. So, so next is the nearline storage. So nearline storage is a low cost, highly durable storage service for storing infrequently accessed data. So now there is a retrieval fee that is associated with a nearline storage. So if you are trying to read that data or change the metadata, etc., you need to pay an extra amount for that. Now there is also a 30 day minimum storage duration. So your object has to be present for 30 days. So you would use this for backups of a data that needs to be accessed for less than once a month. So if that is the kind of data that you have, then you should move it to near line storage. So you should always remember that there is a 30 day minimum that you need to make sure that your object is in if it's a near line storage. Now then comes the code line storage. So code line storage is also a very low cost, highly durable storage, and it has a 90 day minimum. So basically any object that is stored as code line storage has to be present for a minimum of 90 days. Now the retrieval fee is more expensive for code line as compared to near line, but the cost of storage is cheaper for code line as compared to near line. And it is basically used for disaster recovery and for data access for less than once a quarter. So if you want to look up the pricing, the latest pricing, you can always go back to the console. Here you can click on create bucket. So give a name for your bucket. Click on continue. And let's just read in here. And here, let's click on continue. So, and you can check out the pricing over here itself. So, if you click on near line, you can see that the storage is 0 0.010 per GB and the data retrieval cost is this much. So, if you click on code line, you can see that even though the storage size decreases, the storage cost decreases, the data retrieval cost increases over here. So, that's the difference between near line and store code line. And you can see that the difference is this is basically used for data that has to be accessed for less than once a month. And this is used for data that needs to be accessed for less than once a quarter. So that's the difference between both of them. And finally, there is the archival storage. So this is the lowest cost storage and it has the cheapest storage cost. However, the retrieval cost is the maximum. And you would use your archival storage for data that needs to be stored for at least 365 days. And it's best used for long-term digital preservation of data access for less than once a year. So this is the cheapest, but then the retrieval cost here is the maximum. So let's go and look at the pricing for our archival storage. So if you click on archival storage here, you can see that it's the cheapest to use. However, the data retrieval cost here is the maximum. So one thing to note is that if you delete your data before the 30 day for near line, 90 day for code line or for 365 days for archival storage, there is a penalty that you need to pay. So that's an important concept to understand. So there is a penalty that is involved if you delete it before the minimum storage duration. Now, apart from that, there is also one extra component of pricing that is involved. So if you go back to your console again, you also need to pay for certain operations. So for example, there are two sets of operation. There is class A operation and class B operation. So based on the storage class, you need to pay an extra amount for these operations as well. Now, for example, class A operation includes creating a bucket, uploading objects, setting bucket permission and deleting object permission. So for these operations, if you're using standard, then this is the price involved for a thousand operations. Now, similarly, if you go to the near line, you can see that the pricing here increases. So for class A operation, you need to pay so much for so many operations. And as you keep going down for archival, it's the most expensive. So this is also another component, pricing component that you should be aware of. So finally, let's look at how you can set a storage class for your particular bucket and for your object. So whenever you're creating a bucket for the first time, you can set it to a default storage class. And once you do that, then any object that gets uploaded to this particular bucket will get that default storage class. So for example, if you've set the default as near line, then all the objects that get uploaded into this particular bucket will have near line storage class. 
And if you do not want it like that, if you want to manually set your particular object to a certain storage class, then you can do that as well. So you can create an object and within that particular object, you can set it to whatever storage class you want. So that is also possible. So let's see how we can do this in the console. So let's create a new bucket and let's see how that's done. So let's first try to create a default for your particular bucket, a default storage class. So here you can give a name for your storage class. Click on continue. So you can again make this as a single region. Click on continue. And here you can choose the default storage class for your particular bucket. So by default, it is always set to standard. However, you want your objects to be of near line or any object that is uploaded into this particular bucket to have a default storage class of near line, you can set it over here as well. And you can click on continue and you can create your particular bucket. So that is the first way in which you can set your particular object to a certain storage class. The next way to do it is you can open up existing buckets. So let's assume that you have this particular object. So all that you need to do is you just need to click on this particular object. You can go to your configuration and you can just update this from standard to any of the other ones that you want. So these are the two ways in which you can change the storage default class. So I hope this was useful. I will see you in the next.